Welcome to our coverage of NAB 2012. Here with Dave from Adobe. Now, Dave, CS5 really shoved uh, Adobe Premiere and After Effects kind of ahead of the rest. CS5.5 improved upon that. Now, CS6, oh, yeah. it seems to be changing everything. It's, it's an absolute game changer. What we've done over the past year is just listen to what customers want and come back as a team from my field team to engineering teams and really deliver. CS6 is all about the customer and the features that they were looking for. So we've got a lot of features here that customers have been responding to amazing. So we're, we're really impressed with what we've done and the, re, and the reaction that they've had has been awesome. We're really excited, so please take, tell us some of those really important features. Well, let's start with Premiere Pro, and I'll sort of show you some of the things that they were looking at. So in this particular version, the first thing you might see, or in this particular layout, this is the default view. It's all about just video right at you. Now down here, I've sort of purposely left this in a list view, because a lot of us want to see you know, some sort of PyCon view that we can go ahead and adjust the sizes and be able to look at the media. I'm going to go ahead and hit the tilde key and bring this up full screen. Now if you look at Premiere 6, you can just tell instantly it's all about the media. Now check this out, when I want to start looking at clips, I have this new feature, I'm not clicking the mouse or anything, it's, just, it's a new feature called Hover Scrub. I can quickly just find out, you know, here's a piece of black video, you know how frustrating that is, what is this piece of black video down here? I can instantly just start to see what is all this about and find the clip. I don't even have to pay attention to the name. So Hover Scrub has been really cool. You can also click on it and you get this little playhead down here that will start to uh, allow me to use in, you know, in points and out points. I can JKL and really start to do a little bit of a rough cut here and bring that right into Premiere. So that's one of the things that's great. And for those that want to know list view, they can do that. Our coverage of NEB 2012 is brought to you by Kessler. Innovative tools for filmmakers. Lettuce Direct. It's better with lettuce. LettuceDirect.com. Next light. Get lit. Now another feature I find a lot of customers aren't really catching on to are these little icons here. These are showing you what's been used. So you can sort of hover over some of these and it'll tell you that this video was used two times and when you click into it, it will tell you where. So there's a lot of little things in this release that are there that we've been getting feedback from both our Premiere users and Final Cut users as well as a lot of the, after, or the Avid users have been asking us for this. So it's been really great to see. Now a couple other things that I love to sort of show off is we're at third generation 64-bit performance. So as I start to start to go into this, I'm going to loop this. I'm going to play with the UI a little bit, and I'm going to come down here, and I, for one, like my meters, not quite that big for my audio meters, but I like to have them nice and long so I can see what's going on. I don't know if you've noticed, but when we come back over here, we can start to play some of this out, and the media just continues to play. Now, other things I can do, I can jump over to, say, some, some different timelines here, and let me just put this in a loop as well and play some of this back and forth. Um, we can go into, um, oh, ad adjustment layers are another big one that people want to know. If I want to go ahead and put, say, if I turn this layer on here and I've got a picture in picture, I can come down here and add an adjustment layer. Our coverage of NEB 2012 is brought to you by Cinevate, tools for filmmakers and photographers. Della Luce, apparel for filmmakers. Zeiss, we make it visible. This is a big one for a lot of the customers and be able to put this down like this. And I'll just do something simple. You sort of see I have two layers here, just to make it quick. I'll just go ahead and put a three-way color corrector on that for example, but I could do this with all sorts of things. Go over here to my effects controls and start to modify this, these controls. And you can start to see that both of these are automatically controlled by the adjustment layer. So an After Effects user and a Photoshop user would just know exactly what that means. So adjustment layers are, uh, are a fairly big deal for us. Uh, we've also got uh, some pretty amazing uh, trimming controls that we've got inside of uh, Premiere Pro, I'll, I'll tell you. 
And this has been a, uh, a long requested feature. So one of the things we've been working on are a, sort of the, uh, the keys that we design, uh, assign to trimming. So right now we just use arrow keys like people would expect. I can now go in and click into the edit point and I can start to change this with, with uh, uh, keyboard uh, shortcuts here. Let me go in and just um, start to change something. So you see I'm changing what type of edit I'm doing. Now what if I want to make that play and edit at the same time, so what we call dynamic trimming. I'm going to bring up my custom uh, transport controls up here and let's go add a play around setting here or, or you can use shift uh, K if you know that. So I can go ahead and just start to play this and you'll notice down here uh, I can start to edit this timeline back and forth very easily. So much what an Avid user would expect, a Final Cut user, they've been asking for that. Premiere user, frankly, a lot of them have never really requested that because they've been sort of used to using the mouse. So we're kind of bringing all this together and the Premiere users are actually freaking out when they're seeing it as well. <laughs> so Premiere has really had a, a great run um, from that standpoint. Lots of things in the UI. People want to know when they're dropping frames. We've got a new drop frame indicator here that if I get into a situation, it'll turn yellow and it'll tell me how many frames I'm dropping uh, and so forth. We've completely revamped uh, the way that we communicate with third-party cards. This is a big thing our, our users have been asking about. I'm going to go down to playback down here. Now, I don't have a third-party card in this one, but on some of the other machines, I do. If I had a Matrox, an AJA, a Bluefish, a Blackmagic, a control would show up here. We've written a new API that allows us to have full control over that card. The third party writes basically a, a, you know, a small program that just sort of communicate with Premiere. So all of your mer Mercury effects for a GPU go right through the third party card, your titles, your color correction. If it's accelerated down here, you'll see it through the third party card. So we're now taking a lot of the output of that third party card on us and not on the third parties. So no more crazy editing modes and things like that. That's getting a real big hit here at the show. That is really great because we, we enjoy using accelerators um, and it's kind of like a workaround in the past to, to get things to work properly. But now to see that Adobe is embracing it and making it a lot easier is a really great tool. So you sort of know who to blame at this point. You can come <laughs> to us and we'll take a look at the API. So I'm here to tell the, the customers out there that we've really taken this whole transmit very seriously. It's a critical feature for us. Tape ingest and tape export, we're putting on the third parties, we're working very close to them to make sure insert editing's working great and all these different things. We know tape workflow is critical for a lot of people out there. As much as they don't want to admit it, we know that it, it, it's still a, an area out there that has to be addressed. So it's really, really been uh, uh, a welcome feature for a lot of these customers here at the show. So let me ask you, last year, one of the big news was Warp Stabilizer. Yes. Uh, in After Effects, we were able to improve footage. I understand now that Dynamic Link, as wonderful as it is, isn't some a step that somebody has to take to use Correct. that in Premiere. Dynamic Link, by the way, is much faster this go around, but you're absolutely right. Let's take a look at Warp Stabilizer. So if I come over here, I've got a piece of footage over here. Let me just go to my effects controls. Let me turn that off for you. And a new, another new feature we have, I'm going to help the camera out here and bring it up full screen. We now have cinema mode, imagine that. So if I just hit the key here and hit play, I now get this edge to edge view. I know that's not new to a lot of NLEs, but it's new to Premiere. So we're, we're happy with that mode there. So when I do that, let's go down and take a look at what's going on with this file. It is kind of shaky. You can see it's like a GoPro camera. It's got some vibration going on there. If I go over to Warp Stabilizer and I turn it on, you can see it's right here. Um, if people want to know where to find it, if they're new to Premiere, you can just come down here and you can type in the word warp. It'll show up right here. This symbol down here means that it's accelerated. So that's going to make a lot of people excited. It could be accelerated for OpenCL on the new Mac 15 and 17 as well as it's CUDAfied, as we like to call it at Adobe, for CUDA cards, for the support of CUDA cards. So really nice that that playback supported. So what does that mean? I can come over here and I can say, why don't you just stabilize that shot only, and play, I'll play that back for you. You can start to see some of the magic that you saw in After Effects 5.5 working for us here. Um, I can come in and really start to play with this. This is where the accelerated version coming in here really helps uh, when you're using a CUDA card or OpenCL on those machines. And now you can see, uh, you can start making some choices for how you want to scale that. Now, another thing that really gets to be pretty critical 
is when you're shooting with things like, uh, like iPhones, right? This is a very common camera these days, or maybe a Canon 5D. So rolling shutter is definitely an issue. So how do we fix that? So inside of here, under the advanced controls, we have rolling shutter. We've had that for a while. The calculations for rolling shutter aren't really that complex, but if I happen to shoot a lot of news type video and I gotta get rid of a rolling shutter, we decided to give you a feature, its own plugin, so we have rolling shutter repair. So it, it's separate, we've sort of pulled it out and it does its own thing. So I think that's sort of looking at what the customers might, you know, might want a little bit ahead of the of fact and have faster processing, because we're all about faster, faster, faster with, with uh, CS6. I can say this is exciting for me, because um, the warp stabilizer was great, but there are times where I'm trying to be quick on a project and I wanted to, I was debating whether I wanted to bring it into After Effects or just you know, avoid it. Here, you've made it really simple for people to say, you know what, I'm going to use that anytime I need to. Yeah. Stay tuned for more coverage fresh from the floor.